What is fire? What makes things burn? In this film, we're going to study fire, what it is and what it does. We know some things about fire already. Fire gives us heat. It cooks our food and sometimes provides us with light. Fire does a great many things that are useful to man. But fire can also be dangerous. Because fire can be dangerous, we'll study it in a laboratory where we can experiment safely. What do we need to make a fire? Let's try to find out. Here we have a candle, some paper, and some wood. We light the candle with a match. The paper burns easily. A stick of wood burns, too, but not so easily as a sheet of paper. So one thing we need to make a fire is something that will burn, a fuel. What else do we need? What did we use when we lit the candle? A match. A match provides heat. So a second thing we need to make something burn is heat. This is coal. A piece of coal will burn in the fireplace. Will it burn if we hold a match to it? No. One match won't light a piece of coal this size. Two won't either. Nor will three. The flame of this gas burner is much hotter. Soon the coal begins to glow. So it's not just heat we need to make things burn. We need enough heat. When enough heat is applied to a fuel, combustion takes place. The temperature needed to make something burn is called its kindling temperature. When a fuel reaches its kindling temperature, it begins to burn. When a fire is started, most fuels will continue to burn. This paper continues to burn when the match is taken away. Why is that? Combustion, the process of burning, produces heat. The heat from the small fire we started with a match warms the rest of the fuel to kindling temperature, so it begins to burn. A sheet of paper catches fire quickly. It has a low kindling temperature. Dry wood also has a fairly low kindling temperature. Green leaves and twigs have a higher kindling temperature. That means they need more heat to burn. With this glass rod, we can show that some chemicals have a very low kindling temperature. The heat from a warm glass rod is enough to start them burning. Some materials found in the home have very low kindling temperatures. Cleaning fluids and paint thinners can catch fire easily, so they should be handled with great care. Sometimes, rags soaked with these materials can give off enough heat to reach their kindling temperature and begin burning all by themselves. When something catches fire without something else lighting it, it is called spontaneous combustion. Almost anything will burn at some temperature. Even iron will burn when it is ground into a fine powder and exposed to a flame. So will brick. But what is needed to keep things burning? When we put a jar over the candle, we don't touch either the fuel or the heat. Still, the flame goes out. Can you guess why? The fire needs air? That's partly right. Fire does need something from the air to burn. But what? We'll experiment again. From the air in this bottle, one important part has been removed. Watch what happens when we pour it over the flame. Now, in another bottle, we have that one part that was removed from the air a gas called oxygen. 
When we put a bottle of oxygen over the candle, the flame burns more brightly as long as there is oxygen in the bottle. So, fire needs only that one part of the air we call oxygen in order to burn. We've learned that a fire needs three things to burn. Fuel, enough heat, and oxygen. But what is fire? Is it a solid? No. We can move a wire through the flame of the candle. Then is it a gas? Maybe. The wire moves as easily through the flame as it does through air, which is a gas. Do you notice that the flame isn't the same all over? At the top it is yellow, at the bottom it is blue. Are the parts of a flame different in other ways? Look at the tip of this needle where the yellow and blue parts meet. You can see it glow. But does it glow now? No. The needle does not glow at the bottom part of the flame. That is because some parts of the flame are hotter than other parts. An experiment with a glass tube can help us learn why some parts of the flame are hotter. We put one end of the tube in the lower part of the flame and hold a match at the other end. Look carefully and you will see a small flame. Where does its fuel come from? From the candle, of course, but how? Unburned gases from the lower part of the flame are carried up the tube where they burn. So, a flame is made up of both burned and unburned gases. The flame is hotter where most of the burning takes place. But where do the gases come from? The gas comes from the melting candle wax. The heat of the flame raises the temperature of the wax until most of it is turned into a gas. And it is the gas, you remember, that is burning. We know more about fire now. Fire occurs when fuel, heat, and oxygen are combined. Will what we know help us put out a fire? Let's take away the fuel. When we separate the flame from the wax, there is nothing left to burn, and the fire goes out. So one way to put out a fire is to remove the fuel. Can you think of another way to put a candle out? Let's take away the oxygen. When the oxygen in this bottle is used up, the fire goes out. So another way to put out a fire is to keep away the oxygen. And now, let's pour water on it. Why did the fire go out? Fire is produced when fuel, heat, and oxygen are combined. If we take away one of the three things fire needs to burn, the fire will go out. Water helps put out a fire in two ways. Water is cooler than fire. It cools the burning material below its kindling temperature, below the point at which it will burn, and it keeps away the oxygen. Water will extinguish most fires. But water won't always work. Oil and gasoline will float on water and continue to burn. Foam from the fire extinguisher covers the flame until it shuts out enough oxygen to smother it. In the same way, when clothes catch fire, rolling up in a blanket keeps oxygen away from the fire, putting it out. Even rolling on the floor can smother the flame, but running is dangerous. It supplies more oxygen to the fire. Yes, fire can be dangerous. If you see a fire and an adult is not nearby, call the fire department. Stay calm and speak clearly. Give them the address and tell them what is burning. You can't be too careful with fire. Even a small fire can be dangerous. Here, there is a lot of fuel and the flames are spreading, creating more and more heat. The wind provides plenty of oxygen, so the fire grows quickly. Look around. You will see fire used everywhere to keep you warm, 
to cook your food, even to weld metals and turn machines. But a fire, any fire, can be dangerous. So it is important to understand fire and to obey safety rules in the home and out of doors.